Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of Games That Could Take Place in Your Garden on Wigwam Gaming. Today's special guest is Gnomes vs. Fairies. Despite what the title sounds like, we are actually reviewing a game today, not LA's hottest new gay nightclub. Gnomes vs. Fairies is a 3D platformer designed by the indie studio Prismic Studios. When it comes to story, this game definitely has one, and that's about as positive as I can probably get for it. All the gnomes worship these giant rocks, which I'm pretty sure is racist because dwarfs are the ones that are supposed to be infatuated with rocks. The gnomes worship these four magical colored rocks, and then one day they find an evil dark rock filled with scary fairies, which is fun to say. In true video game fashion, instead of murdering all the gnomes, or keeping them in one centralized and heavily guarded prison, the gnomes are kept in random cages distributed throughout the world with keys to each prison being conveniently located nearby. That's just good prison management. There. You are the last free gnome, so it's up to you to platform, puzzle solve, and collect random crap until you have saved the world. Basically, the object of every 3D platformer ever, which is kind of okay, because we don't really get too many of those anymore. Except Sonic. Which is just sad. Jumping into the actual gameplay, you first get to customize your gnome. That's right, you get to pick the color of his shirt, and his beard, and his gender. Progressive. Then you're dumped into the game and holy crap, how do I control this camera? Seriously, trying to wrangle in this camera is like trying to get a hold of a drunk, greased up pig who just got into Cousin Billy Bob's meth stash. You hit the camera reset button and it's just jarring as it skips back into place. It's just so choppy, it's disorienting. And the camera controls seem to change at random. Sometimes it just lodges itself firmly up the gnome's ass. Okay, so don't touch the camera too much. And then we're off. Off into a pretty decent platformer, actually. The gameplay isn't very tight, but it's so floaty that it makes up for its lack of precision. It wouldn't pass for a Nintendo game, but it works. Combat is pretty basic, you have a ranged weapon that you'll never use, and a sword that you'll mash the attack button on until all enemies are dead. Unless they can fly, in which case be prepared to get wrecked, son. Seriously, these flying, freezing bat bird things are the worst. Contrary to the combat system though, the puzzle solving is actually kinda complex. It even borders on impressive. You receive magical powers that can be swapped out at these crystals. You get ice magic, fire magic, etc. magic. Fire melts ice blocks, ice does cool stuff. Ba -bum. The levels are mostly linear, taking you from puzzle to puzzle, usually not unlocking the next area until you've freed the gnome, killed all the enemies, or captured all the fairies. There's a good variety of puzzles, and while concepts are built upon getting more and more complicated, they don't feel like they're repeating themselves. I actually really enjoyed most of them and was able to fight off the camera long enough to finish all the platforming portions I came across. I was actually really enjoying this game's quirkiness until I finally got overrun by the bugs. So, in the course of this one level, I got stuck on this ledge while these enemies just had their way with me. I tried to get away, but couldn't because I was mobbed by enemies. The whole thing was quite frankly a shit show. Then later on in the same level, I totally broke everything. So at the end of every level there is a boss, which is basically just a larger version of another enemy that you've already encountered on the level. On this level, it was a giant snake. Okay, no problem, I'm kicking the snake's butt. Metaphorically speaking, because I don't think snakes have butts. So then I have the snake close to death, so I just push him off the stage thinking that will quickly end the battle. Nope. Snake falls off the ledge, but he doesn't die. So now I'm sitting up here with my thumb up my gnarled gnomey ass, not knowing what to do. The boss battle isn't technically over, I'm locked into the arena still, and I haven't beaten the level yet. So I did what any sensible Baratheon would have done, and I jumped to my death. Oh, and on my way down I saw the snake just chilling there. So I respawn and head back to the boss fight, and now I'm locked out of the fight. I can see the boss, he can see me, and there's nothing we can do about it. Oh, no, no, wait, no, he just jumped off the ledge. So the boss got sad and killed himself, and I got sad and killed myself, and that was the last time I ever played Gnomes vs. Fairies. Conclusion time! The game was cool and weird and had two scoops of cork in it. There were just so many bugs that I really couldn't get any farther in the game than I did. If you're not fighting the camera, you're fighting enemies that are impossible to hit midair, or some bug that makes the puzzle unsolvable. I wanted to like this game. I really did. But it just kept breaking. It does cool things, like there's this whole random section where you have a music synthesizer. I have no idea why this is in the game, but it's awesome. But random cool things like this don't fix game-breaking bugs. If you think that makes them tolerable, though, 
go ahead and give this game a shot. It's $10 on Steam and I didn't hate my time with it. I just don't really have the patience to put up with bugs like this. So what do you think? Have you played the game? Am I right? Am I wrong? Do you hate me? Do you love me? Do you want to send me candy? Or arson? As well as if there's any game you'd like me to review, let me know. I'm always up for suggestions. I've been Wigwam. This has been my show. I love your beautiful faces and I will catch you guys in the next episode. Bye bye Totally non-ironic finger guns. Pew pew.